Welcome! In a past project I prepared about 20 grams of tetramine copper 2 sulfate monohydrate, a violet salt in the form of powder. I decided to try to recrystallize it, as I could not find much information about this process online. So here is the jar after 16 months. If you watched the previous video, you may have noticed that the volume of the powder has decreased considerably. As I mentioned in that video, the yield was over the unit as it contained lots of ethanol from the washing step. This ethanol has been lost to evaporation during the storage, because the container is not airtight. Let's start the procedure. In order to perform the recrystallization, a water bath setup was arranged. My setup consisted of a hot plate stirrer, a 2 liter beaker and a thermal probe, which is very important to maintain a consistent temperature. After that, the beaker was filled up with 2 liters of regular tap water. In order to keep the temperature consistent throughout the beaker, a steer magnet was added. I then turned both heat and steering on. The temperature was set to 70 degrees Celsius and steering speed to 150 RPM. While the temperature built up, the powder was transferred into a 250 ml beaker in order to weigh it. Doing this gave me an idea how much weight was lost during storage. As you can see, it formed a lamp, but all it needed was a little bit of work with a metal spatula to break it up. Some powder remained in the jar, but it was not worth trying to get it all out. In any case, the total weight of the copper complex salt was 18.91 grams, which now represent a more realistic 96% yield from its preparation, rather than the 107% calculated earlier. Then it was all transferred into a larger 500ml beaker, since I thought it would be better to have more area to let the crystals grow. Some distilled water was used to rinse the smaller beaker. The compound is pretty soluble in water, but it loses ammonia molecules when excess water is added, so to counteract that, additional ammonia solution must be added. Also, since its solubility is pretty high even at room temperature, a special type of technique is used, called multisolvent recrystallization. In this technique, a second solvent is used to lower the solubility of the desired compound. In this case, ethanol, as the solid is almost insoluble in it. Here I am preparing 50 ml of 1 to 1 ethanol to concentrate it 25% ammonia solution. It was then poured into the beaker in small portions, stirring it between each addition. The salt won't dissolve completely at this temperature, so heat is needed. This was done in the water bath I prepared in advance. The beaker was covered in plastic wrap to prevent both evaporation and too much ammonia gas escaping from the solution. It is hard to see on camera, but the powder consists of very small tabular or needle-shaped crystals. Luckily for me, the clump was just large enough to hold the beaker at its maximum aperture so I could place it in the water bath very easily. There was no need to fully submerge it in the water bath. As long as it is touching the hot water, it is more than enough for this purpose. I used a plastic pasta pipette to pick up small volumes of solvent to rinse the walls of the beaker, so that all the compound gets in contact with the liquid as the powder settles to the bottom of the beaker, it was easy to pipe the solvent from the top part to rinse the walls. At this point, I decided to insert a thermometer to know when the solution reaches the set temperature. As you can see, there was a lot of salt yet to be dissolved, so more solvent was needed. I kept adding it in small portions, waiting for the solution to reach the correct temperature between each addition. The reason I added the solvent slowly was to reach a saturated solution in hot conditions. That means that only the exact amount of solvent is added, without the slightest excess, so as soon as the temperature drops, crystals begin to form. So the smaller the extra volume, the less temperature needs to drop in order to start the formation of crystals. I then raised the temperature to 75 degrees Celsius, as the liquid wasn't dark enough. I had to prepare more solvent as I ran out partway through. Here there was about 150 ml of it in the beaker, and there was still undissolved salt.
Eventually, all of the salt was dissolved, so the heat treated water bath was turned off and some insulation layers were arranged. Firstly, the beaker was made airtight with plastic wrap and an elastic rubber band. This is key because it allows a saturated atmosphere to develop inside the beaker, preventing the crystals from forming on the surface of the solution. Then, some aluminum foil was used to increase the insulation. The whole 2 liter water bath was also wrapped in aluminum foil. It's cold here, so I added some cloth and towels too. Notice that the steering bar was still on. This is because it's best to keep the heat of the whole solution consistent throughout cooling. The theory behind all of this funny insulation is to make the cooling process as slow as possible so crystals can grow less in number and bigger in size. After two days, it was time to see what was obtained. The steering was turned off and all of the covering was taken apart. The solution was still pretty dark, so it seemed as though nothing happened. But here's the moment of truth. So, trying not to shade the beaker too much, it was removed from the water bath and the solution was decanted into another beaker. And there they are beautiful large crystals of tetramine copper 2 sulfate monohydrate. As I mentioned earlier, a total of 150 ml of solvent was needed to dissolve almost 19 grams of salt, which is roughly a ratio of 1 part of salt per 8 part of solvent. The next step was to dry the crystals, and to do that I used some paper towel and a filter paper on top. The contents of the beaker were poured in the filter paper and then small volumes of ethanol were added to rinse the crystals and remove leftover water. A metal spatula was used to collect all of them. The procedure was repeated several times until no blue solution came of the crystals, while using the metal spatula to spread them, increasing surface contact with the filter paper. Eventually, all the paper had to be changed to rinse the crystals further, as it was too wet to absorb more ethanol. After letting it evaporate for some time, I was able to weigh it to calculate some yields. And here is the final weight, almost 12 grams of beautiful big crystals of tetramine copper 2 sulfate monohydrate. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one and, as always, don't forget to enjoy our hobbies.